Amelia Díaz Hernández. ¿De dónde soy? La Reinser, San Andrés La Reinser. Para mí, yo sigo siendo de La Reinser. Well, for me, I feel I'm from La Ranza, from San Andreas La Ranza. Of course, I'm not wearing the dress from there in La Ranza, so I'm not seen in it. I'm not seen in the clothing, and I didn't put on the dress from there. But do not say that I am no longer from La Ranza. Clearly, I'm from La Ranza. I would not let it be said that now I'm not from La Ranza. I, for me until I die, that's it for me. My mother and father have their home there, and so they work in the fields, sowing corn and beans. The other thing, they grow is flowers. That's what they do. So my mom, when not on the fields, another thing that's common is she does crafts. She sews blouses and makes upales. I have my three sisters who also do the same work, doing handicrafts. Yes. Was it a hard decision for you to come here, to the city? To go for me, yes. For me, yes. Why? Because it was my idea to quit, not to work in the field. I like this in the city. It was my decision. How did your parents feel when you came to the city? Well, more so my mother. She wasn't wanting me to come. Because clearly, there they helped their mothers with the work in the field, doing the housework. Like me, there are six children, but the rest of the sisters were married. They are the little sisters, but they were just young girls. So I, more than the others, I helped my mom. So that when I told my mom that I was going to come work in the city to seek a better life, and I told her. Certainly my mother, she looked real sad when I told her my news, and even more upset when she realized I was not speaking of another, that it was me who was coming. But you earn more money working here, right? Well, not so much, not so much. The problem that I had then in the fields, but I don't have any more, is that one suffers from the heat in the field, tending the family plot. I'm married as well. I have a son. My husband also works, and I work. And my son goes to school. I get to spend some time with my son in the afternoons. First, I have to think of my son. More than anything, I think of him because I don't want to leave him always. What if something happens to me out there? Clearly my son would suffer. I earn very little here, but I know that I am with my family. I'm not separated from my family. The important thing with my son is that I don't want to be apart from him. Now that he is so young, there's not much chance I will leave him. That's it. My son was born here, born in San Cristobal, but I don't think it will be too difficult for him to adjust to where I am. My husband also works here as well. Well, we are helping each other, me and him, too, to make sure we are able to educate our son. On that, we are in agreement. Of course, we do not earn too much money at least if we have to eat, to maintain our health, and for a few other things. Are you afraid he's going to go to Mexico City, Cancun, or the United States? My son, at this point, I'm thinking that if I can give him the necessities, I don't think it will be necessary that he go elsewhere. I want right now to give him more education, more that he is educated, and just a little more, so that when he reaches working age, he won't be rejected then. And that is what I'm fighting for.
my job and all that I'm doing, more than anything, I'm doing it for my son. I'm doing it for him. When you were young, your first language was Spanish, or was it? No, it was a dialect. My dialect is Sotsu. I was speaking 100% Sotsu, not even 50% in Spanish. Nothing more than Sotsu in Spanish. I have two languages. Well, I do not learn Spanish in school. Since then, I learned for my job. In school, of course, I didn't learn anything. It was through the job that I began using it. <laughs> this language, yes. Well, of course, he does not understand. Because he's learning to speak with us, right? But they understand very well. It's also Sotzil. Nothing more for him. He's from Chamula. It's another village. It's San Juan Chamula. And my village was San Andres La Ranza. Do you know if some people from San Andres have gone to the United States? Yes, many. They leave because they have no money. Or because they owe money and need to pay it back. Then comes the day when they are going to pay it off, but they don't pay it. And so they immigrate to other states or to the United States. Sometimes they find work and sometimes they don't find work. They return all the same, or more or less better off, or worse off. One of my brother's-in-law wasn't forced to return, but he did return four months ago. In the United States, he worked in the fields, planting strawberries or cutting fruit. I don't know what else he did. He was there almost two years, but he has little to show for it. But when he was here in Chiapas, they owed a lot of money. So he wasn't sending much money back. But in the end, when he returned, he was able to pay off what he owed. Still, there wasn't anything left for him. He had to go there to pay off his debt. And that's why people go there. As it says, it is nice work there, but most of the time one suffers there. You have to get up very early, and you don't get home until late. Sometimes you eat well, but sometimes you eat poorly. As he says, back there in the United States, one suffers much. There are many abuses, as he says, when one does not speak much Spanish, or very little Spanish. Then the work situation that he encountered was not easy either, because he could not speak Spanish well, and there were bosses who do not understand Spanish either. For him, it was a precarious situation. Fortunately, a friend who he met there gave him a hand. He advised him on how to get a job, and my brother-in-law started to work. Where my brother was, he was with other Mexicans from Puebla and some from Tapachula. My brother-in-law and his brother were the only ones from here. Just those two, no others. Almost all of those who were working there, they came from, as they say, other places. And also, all of them that were there, of course, spoke only Spanish. And my brother couldn't speak Spanish, of course not. I think it was very difficult. I think it was difficult because he couldn't communicate with anyone. He couldn't even ask for anything. That's how it was at work, and all the time. It was one of the perils of being there. You don't speak Spanish, and you don't speak English. They did learn a little Spanish, 
but English like that, no. There were a few words they understood, but very few, very few. More in Spanish, more or less, and now they understand some. Remember, it was the first time that they traveled there, and no one ever thought about traveling there. But really, by necessity, he had to immigrate there, to the United States.